It's unseasonably warm. It's the middle of December, nearly the end of the year. Let's have a little bit of a longer video and recap what happened in 2021. While 2021 was a good year for the garden, despite all the problems we had. So what I'm going to do today is take a look back on 2021. I'm going to look back on all the good things and all the, the some of the highlights of the garden, uh, including the bad stuff. Because, you know, challenges in the garden are nothing more than just that. They're challenges to overcome. And when you overcome them, you have a you have experience, you have wisdom, you have a good thing. And well, let's go look and see what happened in 2021. Well, 2021 is almost over and it's been a, a successful year of gardening for me. Uh, though it was filled with challenges. Um, you can always get over these challenges and I just want to encourage anyone who's uh, new to gardening or learning gardening that when you have oddball years like this past year, um, press on man, press through it. It's how you learn, it's how you uh, get to know your plants and what they do in different conditions. Um, experience is the best teacher. So 2021 uh, we, we had a, a beautiful fall garden uh, get uh, almost wrecked by an epic freeze in February that knocked the power grid out here in Texas and everybody knows about that. But uh, how did we overcome? Well, we lost a bunch of, uh, well, a bunch of plants. Um, lost most of my figs this year. Uh, they weren't killed, only, only two plants, only two trees out of about 30 got killed. Um, but I didn't have room to bring them in, so I, I left them out and covered some of them. And, well, they started coming back, but it took them a long time to recover and they weren't able to put on uh, a good year of growth. So they look bad, they look stunted, and um, well, we're gonna have to prune those up come the next dormant season. And that's not even close. Those fig trees are confused because right now, at the end of the year, we have an unseasonably warm uh, December. The temperatures are averaging 10 degrees hotter here in December. I mean, it's I'm outside in December, it should be cold, and um, it's actually kind of warm. Um, even the weatherman was saying how uh, this is an unprecedented uh, event this year, so th that's posing challenges for my garden that I talked about in my previous previous video but uh, the spring garden wow when we when we started gardening this past spring uh, we had some success especially with the tomatoes I used a drop and lean method uh, string trellising my indeterminate cherry tomatoes they were a greenhouse variety that I grew outdoors and I got tons and tons of tomatoes off that that was my my biggest success uh, we had a lot of success with peppers with uh, uh, well, everything in the spring garden was pretty much a success, except for the squash. Uh, vine borers this year were outrageous. They were bad. They tore up all my squashes, uh, all my zucchini, all my yellow squash, all my pumpkins, all my butternut. Uh, I was able to get some butternut squashes. I was able to get only two of them out of that entire vine. So, uh, yeah, that's a problem, but that's going to have implications for the future. When you have squash vine borer moths uh, laying their eggs on your squash plants uh, and those larvae are drilling into your plants and killing them, uh, the problem is, is those larvae, uh, they pupate in the ground. They're actually in the soil and I've got them here. They're here. Uh, there's no finding them. There's no getting rid of them. Um, I've got some, some options though. So I have to consider that they're in the ground. I can rotate my crops, but the fact is the moth's going to find your squash anyway. The moth found on all my squash all over my little yard because, well, it's a little it's a little yard. Uh, they find those pheromones or those uh, those uh, chemical uh, notifiers that the squash plant emits, and they come to it. But uh, there's a thing called beneficial nematodes. I'm going to try in the spring, and hopefully those beneficial nematodes will help to kill off those vine borer pupa in the ground. Uh, I've dug up several of them while working in my garden and eliminated them, but. Yeah, you can't get rid of all of it, and even if we do get all of them out of my yard, um, or out of my garden with the nematodes, they're just going to fly right back in. So here's what I think I'm going to try. I'm going to try to grow some squash again in the spring. I can't not try. And I'm going to grow them in fresh soil in pots, large pots. And I might try to exclude the vine borer moth by covering them with a, uh, like a screen, like a mesh. Um, big enough to keep the borer out, but uh, or small enough to keep the borer out, but big enough to allow all the sunlight in. And I might, I might try to plant bushing varieties instead of long vining varieties, and well, we'll see what that will do. 
that should exclude the vine borers and it should keep us into some squash. Uh, the other thing is just plant early enough to avoid the vine borers. They usually arrive uh, in the middle of the spring or the, the late part of the spring. And oftentimes you can go ahead and plant uh, early and get a couple of harvests. That's what we did last year. We had a good harvest of, of yellow squash. 2021 was also a year filled with pestilence. And when I say pestilence, I mean you know, bugs and invasions of bugs. Uh, beginning, of course, with the vine borers. Um, they were horrible this year. Um, I had uh, army worms in my tomato plants. Uh, ironically, well, not ironically, uh, by design, my tomato plants that survived were hybrid tomato plants and they had been designed to be more hardy against pests. And Well, the army worms mainly attacked my heirloom varieties and I lost most of my heirloom varieties. Um, I had a virus in one of the heirloom varieties. Uh, two plants had to be removed because of a, a tomato virus. Uh, but the army worms, yeah, I haven't had army worms in the numbers I had. We were easy, we were able to easily control them with uh, BT. But uh, I also saw uh, tomato hornworms for the first time in any numbers uh, this this past growing season. I've never I've never had any tomato hornworms like we had this year, and big, fat, juicy ones too. So. Uh, those are easy enough to deal with you just pick them off but yeah the tomatoes uh, we had success with the hybrids and we did not have much success with the heirlooms so this coming year i'm going to grow that particular hybrid again and another variety that's a hybrid as well and we're going to grow them with the same method the, the string uh, train these up a, a single string and we're going to lean them as they grow so they can grow indefinitely um, i don't think i'm going to put in as many plants though uh, because that really took up an entire garden bed. My largest of my three beds uh, were all tomatoes last year, and I think I really only need um, half of it to be filled up with tomatoes. And the other tomatoes I'll grow in containers. Um, that, that's, that's the plan for now. The spring 2021 garden also featured uh, several kinds of hot peppers. I had my ahi charapita, I had some bird peppers, I had some uh, cayenne peppers, I had some good peppers this year, lots of them too, and uh, that's always a success growing peppers here. Uh, it's almost like you can't fail. Um, they, they, don't, they don't really attract many pests except maybe leaf miners. We had that, but peppers just push right through that. And we kept those chilies and those peppers in the garden well into the summer. And uh, well, we took them out to make room for the fall garden, but yeah, that was a big success. Uh, the peppers. I like growing peppers. I'm going to grow more peppers. I also grew some eggplant. Uh, the eggplant grew well. It grew big. It produced lots of eggplant. And I was able to share that eggplant with my friends at church because I don't like eggplant that much. I can't find a recipe that is, is, is it convinces me to grow eggplant. So I'll probably not grow eggplant in the future. Um, I've learned, you know, I'm just going to start growing things that I like. Um, I do experimental things, but a lot of times those experiments are they're just like eh. So eggplant's one of those. I'm I'm not a I'm not a big fan of, of the big old purple eggplant. I've grown ping tongue uh, Asian eggplant in the past, the long ones. Wasn't a big fan of those either. So yeah, I think I'm gonna pass on the eggplant moving ahead and at least for the for the foreseeable future. Uh, we grew lots of herbs last year. I had a wonderful herb garden that's still going strong. And I encourage you if you have any kind of um, small space grow herbs in it and uh, grow lots of herbs lots of variety having fresh herbs in the kitchen it's been great this year has been wonderful for the herbs i also grew a spring onions bunching onions a japanese type from kitazawa seed and man i still got some growing out here and you'll never be out of your supply of green onions did a lot of dehydrating of those onions and of all my herbs and yeah, I've got a lot of herbs, and that's always a fun thing. So we had good success with the herbs in the garden. Good success. More pestilence arrived when I found some uh, red and black bugs flying around my muscadine grape vineyard. Um, I've got a little micro vineyard here, and any kind of pest pressure, uh, well, I've never experienced before, but it's so small that pest pressure could wipe the whole thing out for a season. And these bugs, I saw them flying around, tons of them. I've never seen them before, didn't know what they were. Uh, they look kind of like a cross between a, a love bug and a wasp, but uh, they turned out to be what, what is called leaf skeletonizer bugs. Uh, and their caterpillars were all in my grapevines, tons of them. I started noticing the, 
the leaves becoming like skeletons and uh, man they were decimating my grapevine I didn't know if I would have enough leaves left to ripen the fruit that had formed uh, we treated those with uh, BT and they died within six hours we, we saved everything uh, the grapevines did look ugly throughout the year but they produced a bumper crop uh, very happy that I'm growing these perennial fruits here uh, muscadine grapes man they're delicious so we had a good year for muscadines the freeze also knocked back my in-ground citrus tree at a Meyer lemon tree way back there you can see her over there where her name is Lucy my wife loves that tree uh, Lucy has bounced back from above the graft where she was frozen down to the ground uh, we had to cut everything off of that tree just about and wait we were we were uh, told by people who know about citrus not to give up on it just to wait and sure enough in the summertime that plant started growing new branches out of the uh, the wood that was above the graft so we know it's true to type we got a, we got ourselves Lucy back so Lucy won't produce fruit this year obviously it's all vigorous new growth uh, citrus generally produces um, you know later on after it's put on some new growth I think I think the Meyer lemon produces on second year wood so maybe we could get some fruit next year but what I'm gonna have to do is get in there and trim Lucy up I uh, didn't prune Lucy very much when we first planted this tree because I didn't know much about it but as I learned I started trying to trim that tree up and keeping it small keeping it in shape uh, keeping it open and we had uh, hundreds of pounds of fruit off of that one tree uh, but the thing is you know what can you do with 100 pounds of Meyer lemon we did all kinds of crazy stuff we had a great crop of Meyer lemons in the past several years but uh, I'd like to have something better in the ground so I think in my front yard I'm going to plant some of my citrus trees uh, the citrus has done well for me this year uh, I had a, a satsuma orange that produced about 50 fruits for me out of a 30 gallon pot and so that was a success I've been eating those things for breakfast and it's a wonderful thing to have fresh citrus uh, the good thing about having citrus in a pot and keeping them small is if you do get a freeze you can take them and shove them in the garage or put them indoors and uh, they'll make it through so I've got success with my citrus and that was good for this year in zone 9a on the Texas coast we have uh, we can garden year-round in most years uh, this includes the hot uh, the heat of the summer the hottest time of the year where temperatures hover above 95 95 to 102 or so is kind of the summer temperatures you can expect through August and September and uh, the night times are just you know in the high 80s or mid 80s so it's hot it's a subtropical heat and it's very humid but you can grow in that if you select the right varieties of plants and so we grew uh, well peppers for example and chilies they'll grow right through it most of the time eggplant will grow right through it uh, but that's also the weediest time and so we had a lot of weeds here we had to deal with but um, but we selected some okra and we selected some uh, long beans yard long beans and those did those performed outstanding man they were so so uh, prolific those purple long beans and they grew I didn't trellis them they just grew and sprawled uh, part of the point of that sprawling was to uh, in fact was to uh, cover be a ground cover and so uh, those grew well I'll probably have lots of volunteers coming up in my middle garden there because we had so many of those beans and you can't get them all if they're if they're sprawling it's hot outside you don't go out much so that was a good crop we grew some cowpeas I always love cowpeas Holstein variety man they were delicious I'll grow Holstein again however this year uh, I'm gonna grow a cowpea variety this coming summer called uh, gray speckled palapy and it's from an African market where it was found I'm not sure who found it and brought it over but the first year I ever grew cowpeas I got those gray speckled palapies from Baker Creek um, ate them loved them they were delicious they were prolific but I wasn't able to find any seed uh, ever since then that was long ago that was uh, wow that that was way back in the early days of my gardening when I didn't know that I should probably save some seeds for next year so uh, yeah lessons learned but I found some I found some gray speckled palapies uh, at a seed shop and bought some and I have some so that's what I'm going to grow this year as a throwback to my early days of gardening uh, I love those cowpeas summer garden we also started some uh, some sweet potato slips in the late spring those got large enough to plant we sowed them out in the garden and had a good sweet potato harvest this year sweet potatoes are always a good summer crop they grow like crazy the problem is because we're having this warm year this unusually warm year the sweet potatoes did not get the signal to 
uh, shut down uh, leafy growth and new root production, start sucking carbohydrates down into the roots uh, and bulking up. And so they, some, some of them bulked up, some of the roots didn't, they just, they just kept on growing. And had I left them in, I'm sure that uh, we'd still be having sweet potato harvests ongoing now, but I needed the garden for fall and winter. Yeah, so sweet potato is another good crop. Sweet potatoes, the okra, um, those are excellent. Cow peas, long beans, uh, eggplant, and uh, yeah, that's, that's a great summer combination for growing through the summer here. Another success was some of the holdovers, the plants that reseeded themselves from last year's fall garden. I had some mustard greens right here actually that grew re really well and reseeded themselves. Um, I had some bok choy in my herb garden that reseeded itself. That's just bonus food right there. So that was a success. Um, we had some ant problems. Uh, we built some hugelkultur beds, had some fire ants move in, and I treated that with orange oil. Orange oil will kill fire ants. What I didn't know was that orange oil is a little bit too harsh to be directly on roots of plants. And so I had a strawberry plant that I put in not too long ago, and it's struggling even still because I doused that whole area heavily with uh, an orange oil solution. Uh, it killed most of the ants. The ones that were way down deep just moved to the other side of the bed. So still got ants in there. Um, probably just gonna leave them be. Yeah, my apple trees, this is the largest one, but they're all about this size. Uh, the goal was to get these whips. That's what you call this one single tall tree. They started out about this big as bench grass. We planted them uh, early this year, right after the freeze. They're doing great, man. It's about as tall as me. So what we'll do this coming year is we'll begin our backyard orchard culture pruning to shape these trees, to force out side growth, scaffolds, uh, those branches that will hold the fruit. We're gonna keep these trees short. I don't want these trees any taller than about this. And, uh, but it's nice and vigorous and we've got good growth on here. So once, uh, once it comes time for the spring to uh, start forcing out new buds on here. We will have pruned this and selected buds that will grow the way we want them to grow. And uh, I'll teach you all about that as well. And we can watch these apples grow. These are tropical or subtropical apple varieties. And we chose these from um, uh, Cuffel Creek Nursery. And Cuffel Creek sells these bench grafts and has a list of heat tolerant apple varieties. We've got one, two, three, four trees in the ground and hopefully we'll start having some apples in three or four years. Looking forward to it. This is my first year that I've ever grown garlic, believe it or not. So uh, the garlic's looking good, but because it's so warm, the stuff shot up quite a bit. If we do get freezes, it'll knock it back. No big deal. Come the spring, it'll shoot right back up again. And hopefully this summer we'll be able to harvest some garlic out of here. And look at this dill, man. Once again, I said, if you've got a small space, we had this little gap in between the garlic. Because I started planting from down there, and my guest, Rachel from Oxheart Gardening, started planting down here, and we didn't have enough bulbs to meet in the middle. So I just plugged in a companion plant, this dill, and it's so healthy looking. I love fresh dill. Uh, plug in herbs wherever you have the opportunity. Yeah, this makes me happy. That right there, I don't know if you can see, I've got a plant growing volunteer borage. Good uh, pollinator attractor, good medicinal plant, but uh, coming up volunteer in my yard. It looks like we have a fight to the death going between a couple of wasps. These wasps have moved in to where the bees were supposed to live. Uh, many of you have been asking me about a, um, a bee update. Well, there's some, there's some uh, bugs living in there, but they look like wasps and they look like they're not happy with each other. The sad thing is um, these leaf cutter bees came and uh, we gave you a video on this and people have been asking what happened. Uh, unfortunately, in every single bee house that we have, uh, fire ants moved in and ate the larva. Fire ants came up and just destroyed these things before they could really even get a start. We did see some leafcutter bees from one of our houses uh, over in the grapevines. Um, they did fine, but it seems like they got decimated by fire ants as well. So uh, right now we've got some other kind of wasp moving in here. That's fine. Uh, anytime you can get solitary wasps that live in tubes and holes like that, uh, they are pollinators for your garden. They are predators in the garden, and I like that. So we've got some wasps in there. I want to show you some of the seeds that I've selected for this coming spring. Um, like I said, I'm going to grow those hybrids 
that uh, I purchased last year from Johnny Select Seed. It's called the Edox tomato, and it's a, uh, a cherry tomato that grows on trusses. And so I bought some more of that. I bought some more Red Flame Cayenne. I need a few more bushes of that Cayenne. That's been a very productive and very good, um, a very good chili pepper. I'm going to grow a couple of other peppers, uh, bell peppers, hot peppers, because man, I love them and um, need to grow what I want to grow, what I what I want to eat. I'm going to grow some Jedi jalapeno peppers again. I've got a three-year-old not a peño pepper back there that. Uh, I'm going to pull out. I'm done with it. Um, I don't like those jalapenos. It needs to have some heat. So um, I'm going to grow some more Jedi jalapenos. I'm going to grow some pickling cucumbers and I'm going to try a couple of different kinds. I got one from Johnny Seed. Uh, I got some from uh, Seeds for Generations. Um, Seeds for Generations. If you use my link down below, you'll help support this channel. This is a family run business, a wonderful family, and they've got a great selection of seeds. I love what they're doing. I'm going to grow this uh, ancho poblano pepper. I got to have poblanos, and last year's poblano peppers that I grew, they didn't get big, they were small. So I'm going to try this particular seed stock. I'm going to grow some beets in the spring. I'm going to grow some pole beans because I'll eat them. I'm gonna, here's another cucumber I'm going to grow, and we're going to make pickles again. Now, I love pickles, man. I love fermenting. And so uh, not to grow the things I like, well, that's just crazy. Um, one of the things we suffered from pestilence wise in 20. Uh, 21 was cucumber beetles and so I showed you how to treat those with spinosad and that knocked them back pretty well But that was just another infestation that that I wasn't ready for and I had never had in the past I mean you see a cucumber beetle here and there, but this past year man They were all over the place and you could see the damage they were doing I'm gonna try again with the squash gonna try again in different manners I'm uh, gonna grow some Roma tomatoes. I skipped out on Romas in the past several years, but you gotta have Roma tomatoes, man herbs, basil, lettuce, I'm going to grow some chives, probably grow some turnips in the, in the, in the spring as well. Uh, but here's, here's those seeds I found, uh, the gray speckled palopy. The gray speckled palopy I found from the Experimental Farm Network. And these seeds are, uh, are going to be good. Uh, they come, like I said, they come from Africa specifically. They come from a market in Botswana. And um, yeah, these are going to be very good. Uh, and while I was there, I saw some other seeds I, I'd like to try, so uh, we'll see. That's a little preview. Oh, I got my Kitazawa seeds. I love Kitazawa for Asian uh, Asian greens, Asian produce. I like Asian food. I like to cook. So I need some of that Korean pepper. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but this is the pepper that Korean pepper flakes are made with that goes into kimchi. So I'm going to try to grow my own. I got some Serrano peppers from... From Kitazawa, going to grow some of these good Mexican uh, peppers, and I got a variety of different kinds of Japanese herbs and onions. I got some; these are the ones I grew last year that were so good, um, bok choy, pak choy, that kind of stuff. So, always got to have my Asian greens, my Asian uh, uh, herbs, and we're going to grow some of that. So, this spring, uh, I'm also going to grow some onions, some bulbing onions. I'm building a garden bed in one of my raised beds over there. And we're going to plug in onions. They should be here, uh, yeah, maybe in a week. And I'll show you how to plant those onion starts. Uh, Got to get them in. I, I love to have those onions. I tried to grow onions in the past, and I had uh, I had some success, but I have a lot to learn, so we can learn together. This is home of the onions. Getting this bed ready. This is a hugel culture bed. So I will actually need this to be topped off to give room for those onions to bulb up. So uh, that's what those bags are for. There's some nice looking cilantro and parsley. Yeah, that's looking good. Growing like crazy because it's warm. Um, it's so warm that I'm worried the cilantro might bolt. But that's okay. If it bolts, then we get coriander seed. My uh, elderberry here was knocked back by the freeze but started to put on new growth in the summer. So that's going to probably need some trimming and pruning because that's just too spindly. This is how crazy the weather is. My muscadines think they can fruit again. These will not ripen, obviously. All the leaves are currently falling off these trees as they sense the, the uh, time of the year. It's time for them to go dormant and we can trim these up. But uh, yeah, isn't that crazy? December, putting on fruit.
Thanks for joining us on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. If you like gardening in a small context like this, if you want to learn how to grow things in a backyard, please follow our channel. I invite you to subscribe to us. Even if you're not Zone 9A, you can pick up tips and hints on gardening in this context, a small garden. And like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.